Careface CBP. Subscribe, like, comment, and let the whole world know about it. Did you know this? A kampong is a historical maroon village located in the hills of St. Elizabeth Parish on the island of Jamaica. It is located in cockpit country, where Jamaican maroons and indigenous Tino, established a fortified stronghold in the hilly terrain in the 17th century. Did you know this? In the 18th century, Jamaican maroon Kojo, Kajo or Kwadwo, he was a maroon leader during the time of Nanny of the Maroon. Kajo or Kojo is the name given to a boy born on a Monday. He has been described as the greatest of all the Maroon leaders. The Jamaican Maroons are descended from Africans, who conquered enslavers and established communities of free black people in Jamaica in the mountains of the colony of Jamaica during the era of slavery, on the island. Did you know this? African slaves imported during the Spanish period may have provided the first runaways, apparently mixing with the Native American Tino or Arawak people that remained in the country. Some may have gained liberty when the English attacked Jamaica and took it in 1655, and subsequently. Kajo was the leader of a community of runaway slaves known as Kajo's Town Trelawney Town. For nearly a century, until the 1739 and 1740 peace treaties with the British rulers of the island, the Maroons victoriously resisted conquest. Did you know this? The 1739 treaty with the British, according to this Maroon town's oral history. This legendary, ancient mango tree is still standing, the tree symbolizes the common kinship of the community on its common land, however, the returned Maroons of Flagstaff believe that the treaty was signed at Petty River Bottom, near the village of Flagstaff. Did you know this? During the First Maroon War, rebel slaves and their descendants fought a guerrilla war to secure the independence of free black people in Jamaica against the British. Did you know this? Hostilities were finally ended by a treaty between the two groups in 1739, signed under British Governor Edward Trelawney. It granted Kajo's Maroons 1,500 acres of land between their strongholds of Kajo's town Trelawney and a kampong in the cockpits. Did you know this? While the treaty granted this land to Trelawney town, it did not recognize a kampong town. In 1756, following a land dispute between Maroons from a Kampong town and neighboring planters, the assembly specifically granted the Kampong town an additional 1,000 acres of land. Did you know this? The treaty also granted the Maroons a certain amount of political autonomy and economic freedoms, in return for their providing military support in case of invasion or rebellion. They also had to agree to return runaway slaves, for which they were paid a bounty of $2 each. This last clause in the treaty caused tension between the Maroons and the enslaved black population. From time to time refugees from the plantations continued to find their way to Maroon settlements and were sometimes allowed to stay. However, a Kampong Maroons earned an income from hunting runaways on behalf of neighboring planters. Did you know this? After the treaty, Kajo ruled Trelawney town, while his brother-in-arms, a Kampong, ruled a Kampong town. In 1751, Planter Thomas Thistlewood recorded meeting a Kampong, whom he called Captain Kampoon. The planter described the maroon leader as about my size, in a ruffled shirt, blue broadcloth coat, scarlet cuffs to his sleeves, gold buttons, and black hat, white linen breeches puffed at the knee, no stockings or shoes on. Did you know this? In 1755, Zacharias Carries wrote in his diary that when he met a Kampong, the maroon leader wore an embroidered waistcoat gold lace around his hat, a silver chain about his neck to which was hung a silver medal wherein. A kampong also had ear rings, and on each of his fingers, rings of silver, but that he still went barefoot. Did you know this? In the 1760s, the Maroons of a kampong town played a significant role in suppressing rebellions inspired by Taki's war in western Jamaica. Captain Kwashi, reporting to Superintendent John Kelly, and his Maroon warriors captured a number of rebel slaves. Some historians believe that there were no official records of a Kampong after the 1750s. However, there is evidence that a Kampong tried to take over Trelawney Town in the mid-1760s. Did you know this? The Treaty of 1739 named the Kampong as Kajo's successor. When Kajo died in 1764, a Kampong tried to take control of Trelawney Town. The governor, Roger Hope Ellitson, asserted authority over the Leeward Maroons. Ellitson instructed Superintendent John James to take the Trelawney Town badge of authority away from a Kampong, 
and to give it to a Trelawney Town Maroon officer named Lewis. James instructed a Kampong that he had authority only over Kampong Town. Did you know this? A Kampong seems to have died in the decade that followed. After Kajo and a Kampong died, control of the Leeward Maroon Towns passed to white superintendents, who were appointed by the governor to supervise the Maroon Towns. In 1773 it was reported that the white superintendent had appointed Maroon Captains Cranky and Munko as the officers reporting to him in the Kampong town. Did you know all that? Well, if you didn't know, now you know. Brought to you by Careface CVP. Subscribe, like, comment, and let the whole world know about us. Careface CVP.